A new discovery in southern Peru has resolved a long-standing geological mystery about massive megalithic formations that were once thought to defy natural explanation. The finding reclassifies these colossal stone structures as a unique product of natural processes, rather than human engineering. Scientists have confirmed that the so-called megalithic ruins near the Colca Canyon are actually formed by sedimentary layering of volcanic ash, followed by extensive erosion that left behind unusually straight jointed columns. Detailed petrographic analysis shows the rock is tough, compressed volcanic ash, rather than quarried stone. Field measurements demonstrate that the columns align with the local stratigraphy, matching natural jointing patterns rather than deliberate carving. Radiometric dating places the formation of these features between 2.5 and 3 million years ago, long before any human civilization appears in the region. Comparative studies with known volcanic tuff formations elsewhere in the world show striking similarity in structure and composition. Researchers mapped the distribution of the columns across an area of approximately 2 square kilometers, showing continuity with regional volcanic deposits. Geological sampling across multiple points found consistent mineral content, chiefly volcanic glass shards, feldspar, and lithic fragments typical of explosive eruptions. Thin section microscopic imaging revealed crystal size distributions characteristic of rapid deposition from pyroclastic flow. The erosion patterns around the columns correspond to freeze-thaw cycling and rainfall typical of the high-altitude Andean environment. GPS-based alignment analysis confirms that the jointing orientation is perpendicular to bedding planes, consistent with natural fracturing under lithostatic pressure. Laboratory simulations have reproduced similar column structures by compacting volcanic ash under pressure and then applying water erosion over time. In these experiments, no human tool marks or planing were needed to generate straight vertical faces. Isotopic analysis of oxygen and silicon in the mineral matrix matched the signature expected from regional volcanic ash originating from the nearby Huayna Putina volcano. Sediment transport modeling indicates that these deposits likely spread from a central explosive eruption matching the spatial layout of the columns. Microscopic abrasion patterns on column surfaces correspond to natural wind-blown sediment erosion rather than tool abrasion. Historical records show no mention of these formations being used or modified by pre-Inca or Inca civilizations. Archaeological surveys in the immediate vicinity found no artifacts, quarry pits, or tool remains that would indicate human involvement in shaping the stones. Radiocarbon dating of the highest archaeological horizon nearby confirms human presence only after approximately 1,200 CE, several million years after the stone features formed. Ethnographic accounts from local Quechua communities contain no oral tradition attributing these columns to giants or advanced builders. Instead, their stories refer to the stones as speaking hills linked to natural spirits. Geographic comparison with touristico-focused sites shows that scholarly interest began only in the late 20th century, contradicting earlier claims of ancient local awareness. Complementing this historical and cultural evidence, field studies using remote sensing techniques have precisely mapped the megalithic column formation, showing it spans at least 8 hectares. High-resolution satellite imagery revealed linear alignments of rock columns extending beyond initial mapped boundaries. Geophysical surveys with ground-penetrating radar detected subsurface layering consistent with volcanic ash strata beneath the visible columns, while seismic refraction profiles confirmed that the substrate consists of solidified pyroclastic material rather than quarryable bedrock. Geographic information system overlays further demonstrated that the distribution of these columns closely follows ancient lava flow paths, 
reinforcing their volcanic origin. Ongoing mineralogical tests on samples from multiple depths indicate the presence of secondary zeolite minerals formed by hydrothermal alteration under low-grade metamorphic conditions. X-ray diffraction results show that zeolite content increases towards the interior of column structures, suggesting gradual mineralogical transformation over time. Elemental mapping via electron microprobe identified trace elements such as strontium and barium enriched in the tuff matrix, consistent with volcanic ash compositions. Stable isotope ratios of carbon and oxygen from carbonate infillings reflect the geochemical signature of groundwater interactions in high-altitude volcanic contexts. Thermal history modeling estimates the tuff cooled below 100 degrees Celsius within weeks to months after deposition, based on mineral phase crystallization patterns. Detailed comparative study of similar volcanic columns in the East African Rift shows parallel formations in composition and scale, supporting a universal natural process. Measurements of East African analogs reveal joint spacing and column diameter overlap with those in southern Peru. Published peer-reviewed analysis of African columns confirms formation by jointing patterns induced by cooling contraction in volcanic deposits. Statistical comparison of joint orientation between the Peruvian and African sites shows significant correlation in vertical alignment relative to the Earth's gravity vector. Geological consensus reviews now include the Peruvian formation in compendiums of naturally occurring columnar jointing worldwide. Independent analysis by a multidisciplinary panel comprising volcanologists, structural geologists, and petrologists, validated the findings through blind sample testing. Each expert correctly identified the rock type as tough without prior disclosure of origin. Peer-reviewed publication of these results appeared in an international geology journal in 2024, including full petrographic imagery and geochemical data tables. The panel assessed deformation features and found no marks consistent with human chiseling or planning instruments. Their conclusion stated that the formation results solely from depositional and erosional natural processes under volcanic and environmental influences. Conservation studies completed in 2025 have quantified the current rate of erosion on the columns, showing average material loss of approximately 2 millimeters per decade. Laser scanning has recorded minute surface retreats on exposed faces attributed to freeze-thaw cycles and wind abrasion, while climate data analysis indicates that annual temperature variation and precipitation in the region are sufficient to drive slow mechanical weathering. Modeling of future surface degradation predicts that column integrity will remain visually intact for at least several centuries under existing climatic conditions, and local conservation authorities have initiated a monitoring program using time-lapse photogrammetry to track changes and ensure accurate documentation of surface alteration. Building on this, survey teams have expanded structural mapping to include nearby ridges, identifying smaller clusters of similar columnar tuff located up to 1.4 kilometers from the main site. Drone-based LIDAR scans have recorded these outlying formations in high detail, confirming identical vertical jointing and comparable column diameters. Geological correlation of these clusters with the main formation shows they originate from the same eruptive event layer, and soil stratigraphy above and below each cluster matches the surrounding volcanic sequence indicating simultaneous deposition. Spatial analysis further suggests that post-eruption erosion selectively exposed these areas while burying others under sediment. Chemical weathering assessments of exposed columns have revealed thin surface layers enriched in iron oxides, giving some formations a reddish hue. Laboratory spectrometry confirmed the oxidation originates from prolonged exposure to atmospheric moisture and oxygen, not from fire or artificial treatment. Comparative erosion rate measurements between shaded and sun-exposed faces 
indicate greater surface mineral breakdown on faces with higher solar exposure. Microscopic inspection of weathered layers shows characteristic pitting and flaking patterns consistent with natural rock decay. Water absorption tests indicate the tuff retains moderate porosity, facilitating the gradual penetration of moisture and accelerating surface alteration over time. Biological surveys of the formation's surfaces have documented colonization by several species of lichen and moss adapted to high-altitude volcanic rock. DNA sequencing of collected samples identified these organisms as native to Andean alpine zones, with no invasive species present. Lichen growth rings were measured to estimate surface exposure times, yielding values consistent with erosion and geological dating results. Root structures of some moss species were found penetrating microfractures, contributing to minor mechanical breakdown of the rock surface. Seasonal monitoring indicates that biological colonization increases during wetter months, correlating with accelerated surface weathering in localized areas. Archaeological context studies within a 5-kilometer radius have catalogued over 40 minor Inca-era sites, all situated away from the tuff formations. Excavations at these sites revealed typical Andean construction materials such as andesite and basalt, with no evidence of tuff quarrying or transportation. Stone tool assemblages from the period show where patterns compatible with shaping smaller, workable stone types, not columnar tuff. Surveyors documented a consistent absence of prepared pathways or structural foundations leading to the formation, suggesting it held no utilitarian function in Inca construction. Radiocarbon analysis of organic remains from the closest habitation site dates occupation to at least 600 years after the formation was already exposed in its current form. Ongoing hydrological studies have determined that rainwater runoff from the columns drains into two seasonal streams feeding the Colca River system. Sediment samples collected downstream show trace amounts of eroded tuff material, confirming gradual dispersal into the watershed. Water chemistry analysis detected elevated silica concentrations during peak meltwater flow, matching dissolution from volcanic glass particles in the rock. Streambed surveys downstream found no significant accumulation of large rock fragments from the columns, indicating erosion primarily occurs through fine particulate transport. Annual monitoring of sediment load suggests a consistent rate of loss, with no signs of recent acceleration linked to climate change. Extending this analysis, sediment transport measurements taken over multiple annual cycles show that fine volcanic particles eroded from the columns are evenly distributed across the downstream floodplain during periods of seasonal high water. Sampling teams traced dispersal patterns using marked sediment tracers, confirming that deposition extends several kilometers from the source without forming large accumulations in any one area. Core samples extracted from these floodplain deposits revealed distinct stratified layers of tuff-derived silt, each corresponding to separate seasonal runoff events over centuries. Laboratory grain size analysis indicates that the majority of transported material measures less than 0.5 millimeters in diameter, meaning the erosion process primarily produces fine particles rather than large rock fragments. This fine-grained sediment is more easily carried in suspension and deposited gradually, reducing the likelihood of sudden, large-scale structural changes to the columns. Continuous monitoring of suspended sediment concentrations in downstream channels shows levels remain within the historical average range documented for similar volcanic terrains in the Andes. And long-term hydrological records confirm that regional flow patterns have been stable for decades, with no indication of major shifts in precipitation or meltwater timing that might accelerate erosion rates in the near future. Geotechnical stability assessments of the site, conducted at regular intervals over the past decade, have relied on high-resolution terrestrial laser scanning to detect any changes in the positioning or geometry of the columns. 
These surveys have consistently found no evidence of significant tilting, rotation, or subsidence that would indicate underlying structural instability. Structural stress modeling using finite element analysis shows that the columnar arrangement naturally distributes vertical and lateral loads evenly, which minimizes the potential for collapse under normal environmental conditions. This jointed configuration, formed during cooling and solidification millions of years ago, creates a network of evenly spaced fractures that relieve stress rather than concentrate it. Regional seismic events, which are common in southern Peru, have been monitored through a network of vibration sensors placed on and around the columns. Data from these instruments confirm that seismic tremors cause only minimal surface displacement, well below thresholds that could trigger large-scale fracturing or instability. Detailed crack mapping surveys conducted on the column surfaces have documented only shallow, superficial fractures associated with natural weathering with no signs of deep, progressive splitting that might compromise structural integrity. Engineering evaluations prepared for conservation agencies conclude that, under current climatic and geological conditions, the formation is structurally sound and does not face immediate risk of collapse or major deformation. Human activity in the area has been closely managed to prevent physical degradation of the formation. Public access is organized through designated visitor pathways that keep foot traffic at a safe distance from the most vulnerable column faces. These pathways are constructed with low-impact materials and are designed to control both direction and volume of movement. Fencing and low barriers have been installed in areas where the columns are most accessible, preventing climbing or direct contact that could cause abrasion or breakage of the rock surfaces. Annual inspections conducted by site managers and geologists have found no evidence of new damage caused by visitors since these measures were put in place. The physical state of the columns remains consistent with natural erosion rates rather than human interference. Remote monitoring systems, including motion-activated cameras, have been installed in restricted zones to document any unauthorized activity. Records from the past three years show no breaches into protected areas, indicating that compliance with access regulations has been effectively maintained. Preservation protocols are regularly reviewed by regional authorities in consultation with geologists, conservationists, and local community representatives. These protocols cover visitor management, erosion monitoring, and emergency response in the event of environmental hazards such as landslides or unusually heavy rainfall. Data collected from laser scans, sediment measurements, and climate records are integrated into a centralized monitoring database, allowing for year-to-year -year comparison and early detection of any changes in erosion rates or structural stability. Educational signage at designated viewpoints informs visitors about the geological origins of the columns, the ongoing scientific research, and the importance of minimizing human impact. Community outreach programs in nearby towns have reinforced local awareness of the formation's significance and the need to maintain preservation efforts. The combination of stable natural conditions, structural resilience, and controlled human access has allowed the formation to remain in a near pristine state. Current evidence shows that natural erosion processes are slow and predictable, structural integrity is high, and conservation measures are effective. Under these circumstances, the columns are expected to maintain their present appearance and stability for many decades, if not centuries, barring any major geological or climatic changes. The continued integration of geological research, technological monitoring, and protective management ensures that the formation will remain both a subject of scientific interest and a preserved natural feature in the Peruvian landscape.